Hello, welcome to the final Soccer Lens TV of the season. Now I'm Andy Brassel. Now, uh, you may notice from my attire that it really is summer in London at last. Um, I can't really offer any meteorological explanation for this. So one can only assume uh, that the sun has come out uh, to celebrate a fantastic end to the European season. That's why we're a little late with this latest episode because we wanted to reflect on the uh, Champions League final between Bayern and Inter. And of course it was an um, opportunity for one of them uh, to clinch a historic treble, uh, having both uh, completed the domestic double and never managed a treble before in their history. In the event, it was uh, Jose Mourinho's side who uh, managed it in their first European Cup since 1965. Um, it, it wasn't uh, an absolute classic final, but it was very absorbing uh, nonetheless, and Inter just about deserving to uh, come out as 2 0 victors. Um, I think they were most people's pre-match favourites um, because of the way they controlled the games, controlled the ties in the knockout rounds, uh, notab notably against Chelsea, um, a very, very well organised and uh, also in the return leg against Barcelona at the Camp Nou having won the first leg 3-1 um, at the San Siro. Uh, now I'm, I'm sure we'll come back to Barcelona a little later in the, in the show, uh, but nevertheless that was a masterclass um, in defending, uh, not just uh, because uh, it was Barcelona the best team in Europe, but of course they had uh, 10 men for a lot of that after the rather harsh sending off of Thiago Motta. Now I think that's why it was um, that's so uh, gratifying that um, two goals in the final were scored by Diego Melito. Now he's had a, a terrific season. He also scored the goal, of course, that um, beat Roma in the Italian Cup final, and the goal on the final day of the Serie A season at Siena, uh, which uh, clinched the win there and clinched uh, the title for uh, Inter. Now, um, it, it's capped a brilliant season for him at 30 years old. A lot of people thought his chance of making it at a big, big club in Europe had gone. He'd scored consistently with the likes of Genoa and Real Saragossa, middling clubs before. But uh, a lot of people thought um, this move had come a little bit too late for him. And he's not a striker uh, who has a great deal of pace. He's not brilliant in the air. He's quite old-fashioned sort of poacher. Uh, he took his two goals expertly last night, um, but it was a reward not just for a great season and proof that he can step up uh, to that higher level, uh, but the fact that he worked his socks off in every single game of the season. And when we look back at that defensive effort in the semi-final um, against Barcelona, especially in that second leg, he was uh, so uh, key in that he absolutely ran himself into the ground with no service for uh, over an hour, and uh, he was as, as important as anyone in the fact that they got out of the Camp Nou uh, with that ticket for the final. Um, I, I think we have to spare a thought for Bayern Munich as well. They've had a really great season and turned it around so well under Louis van Gaal. His job looked under great threat back in uh, November, December time. Um, he was understandably uh, pretty gutted by the, the, the defeat and you could tell there weren't any real weight in his words when he said uh, that the, the Champions League was always considered just a bonus and they'd done the best season they possibly could anyway. Um, they of course contributed a lot of great um, moments of the Champions League this season. Um, the defence wasn't always the best and uh, I think it was always on the cards that Inter and uh, particularly Bessie Schneider would always be able to unpick this but nevertheless they um, provided some very exciting moments. Um, notice of, notably uh, Ayo Robin's goals at uh, Fiorentina and the Old Trap had seen them through both the last 16 and the quarterfinals. Um, on, on the away goals rule. Robin was close last night, but I think well, again one of the big differences uh, was uh, Julio Cesar, who, um, if he's not the best goalkeeper in the world, but he's damn close. And um, his saves from Thomas Muller right at the start of the second half when uh, Bayern came out with all guns blazing and his later uh, tip around from, from Robin, who was always uh, Bayern's greatest threat, were um, again very, very important moments in the final. Now, of course. No uh, small irony in the fact that uh, Jose Mourinho's uh, last game for Inter is at the Bernabeu, which will now be his um, permanent home as he's uh, going to sign on the dotted line with uh, Real Madrid for really three or four years, depending on the reports, you believe, for uh, uh, 10 million euros a year. Now, it's, it's fascinating. If we look forward to next season in the Spanish League, which, of course, Barcelona uh, clinched uh, the, the, the week before uh, Lionel Messi getting another two goals, they beat Real the league um, 4-0. It's, it's fascinating to see how Mourinho will get on there. Um, the last results manager that um, took the helmet at the Bernabeu did win the title, Fabio Capello, but um, his style of football wasn't really uh, to the liking of uh, the boardroom and the fans at Real Madrid. So despite the fact he authored that tremendous comeback against Barcelona, 
um, to, to come back and win the league in 2008. He was um, out, out the door uh, very soon afterwards, um, 2007, sorry. So um, it's difficult to see how Mourinho is going to improve on this. Uh, we all know he's a coach um, who can win stuff, but ne nevertheless, um, do we know he's a coach who can produce the sort of football that's such an intrinsic part of Real Madrid's image and history? And, this is a more germane point than normal because, of course, they've got to catch up uh, stylistically and sexy football-wise to Barcelona. So this is going to be um, possibly the key challenge of his managerial career. It'll be interesting to see um, how long he can last in what's sure to be a fairly combustible relationship between him and uh, Argentino Pérez, uh, the, the, the current president of Real Madrid. Now, of course, if we look forward to next season's Champions League, uh, these two, are gonna, uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona, are going to have a huge, huge say in it. I actually think, going back to that semi-final um, and then the second leg of that, um, a lot of people were quite frustrated, um, lovers of beautiful football were quite frustrated that Barcelona didn't go through, but in the end, I think this is going to uh, make them raise the bar even higher. The fact that they know that um, even if uh, Xavi completes 300 passes a game, they still need something more to get through certain teams. And um, they're going to have to work out how to use Ibrahimovic as their plan B if he should stay there. Uh, I think uh, Gerard Piquet picking him out um, with long passes, bypassing the midfield, it makes him heresy to Barcelona fans. But it is something that they could uh, learn to do and would definitely benefit them. Of course, the fact that they've got David Villa now, the first big move of the summer, is going to make a big, big difference as well. And arguably, if he'd have completed this move last summer, which he was very, very close to doing, they'd be uh, polishing their second Champions League trophy in two years right now. Um, but nevertheless, they're going to be coming out all guns blazing. And um, I, I think a lot of people are a little concerned how this will turn out for the Spanish league because, of course, uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona are so uh, far away from uh, the third and fourth place clubs this season. And a lot of hand wringing about the overall quality of the league. I think at this point, we really just have to take our hats off to what's been a tremendous title race. And that those uh, two have provided such consistent standards of excellence uh, in any other season, uh, Real Madrid's 96 points would have uh, easily clinched uh, the, the, the title, but it promises to be another close race again next season. Now, going a bit further down in the Champions League, um, we've got some interesting um, new teams in there. Of course, we've got Bursa Sport becoming only the fifth club in uh, Turkish league history after um, the big three of uh, Fenerbahce, Galatasaray, uh, Beziktas, and of, of course, Trabs on Sport, who won a couple of times at the end of the 70s and start of the 80s, only the 15th in Turkish League history to win the league. So, congratulations to them. It would be great to see a new team in there. Of course, we've got some interesting new teams in the playoffs as well. Tottenham Hotspur from England have never um, been in the Champions League proper in the richest club in the world, never to have done so. Uh, they've got uh, the prospect of meeting up with the likes of uh, Sam Doria, uh, Braga, who've had a great season in Portugal, but Auxerre and John, John Fernandes, they were. Um, the coach there has done a fabulous job. They were most people's relegation favourites at the start of the season. Not a team of big stars, but the likes of Benoit Pedretti and Irina Zielen. It's interesting to see if they can hold on to them. Have, have done a, a really great job and they clinched it with uh, Cedric von Bart's uh, winner at Sosha with the very last kick of the French League season. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on in that. Anyway, of course, we've got the World Cup to enjoy this season. Um, I hope your team. Uh, fulfill all your dreams, obviously it's not possible for all of you, but I hope it's um, a great attacking tournament anyway, I think uh, there's a lot to be positive about with so many uh, tournaments being won uh, by uh, teams playing attacking football recently, notably Spain in Euro 2008, so fingers crossed for that. Well thanks so much for watching this season and uh, I hope you have a great summer, I'm sure I'll see you again soon.